Hello, I'm Tom Patterson with Flying Magazine. Welcome to our virtual event, What's Next in General and Business Aviation. And we're here today with Mark Malloy, who's blazed a trail in the aviation industry through a very successful career at Beechcraft Textron. And then he co-founded Partners in Aviation, a new kind of business revolving around shared aircraft ownership. Uh, as president of Partners in Aviation, Mark, you're, you're based in Chicago, and I want to hear more about your personal story in a minute. But first, um, I would love to ask you a question um, that might appeal to our audience. You know, most folks know about traditional fractionals, but what's the differentiator here for PIA? What's the tech enabler that makes this a smoother experience that could make it easy for wannabes to start flying in their own business jets? Um, I think the simple answer is we are we're fractional by definition because there is more than one owner. But in the standard fractional model, that's multiple owners with multiple aircraft and an infrastructure around that. Ours is a little simpler. Ours is defined as two owners, one aircraft. That's it. That's that's all it is. So by definition, we are a fraction, but we are we're only a fraction of two. You've been generating a lot of buzz in the industry with partners in aviation. And I think a lot of people may have heard your name, but they may not know your story. Could you share a little bit about your story with us? About my personal story? Sure. And, and then how it led to where we are now. It's a great um, story. Uh, <laughs> I hope it's as interesting to others as it is to you. Thank you. Uh, I, I've been in aviation for 40 years. Uh, my first job out of college was the job that I kept for 34 years. I didn't change the job. Um, I started selling airplanes for Beechcraft um, in 1981 and loved it and, in, and uh, stayed in the Chicago area and did that in this geography for those for 34 years and then uh, retired from, from that to start Partners in Aviation. So this is my second job since college. Um, but basically, that's that's my journey. It it uh, it started um, with trying to blend the business finance background I had from school with um, this desire to get into the aviation space and work those two. And um, I I had an opportunity to get into be introduced to aircraft sales, which I thought coming out of college was oh my gosh, I never thought somebody actually has to sell those things. How does that work? And I I actually had a chance to speak to a gentleman out of New York who sold for Beechcraft. And I asked him what I should do so that someday I could maybe do what he does. And he gave me some information and, and opened some doors for me. And um, I, I got, I got a job kind of as a, a apprentice salesperson actually for the, for the Beechcraft distributorship up in Chicago, in the Chicago area um, and never changed course. So here I am today now. How did you come up with the idea initially for PIA? Um, you know, there's, there was no one aha moment, really. It was, um, I think, just through all those years of working with folks that I sold new, new King Airs was basically my job. And most of my clients were kind, we had that, had that debate of how am I going to justify this? How am I going to justify owning this airplane that I really want? Boy, it seems like a lot of dollars, and uh, I don't know how much I'm going to use it. So we, I spent a good part of my time with them, helping them justify that decision. And oftentimes, as we kind of analyze that, sharing the aircraft made sense. So partnership, the math of partnership always was pretty clear. It was everything else that was a bad idea. Um, all of the, all of the yeah buts. So. Um, that's kind of where it started is, is, I, you know, started challenging that idea of, could we, could we come up with a good way to fix the, the parts that aren't attractive in a partnership and keep the math that was, and I spent a couple of years with the smartest guys I know in the industry, legal, um, management, uh, maintenance folks, um, and, and we worked out that question until we got to the point where we thought, you know, actually, we can do this and we can do this well. And we can go back to the math of two owners splitting, splitting the numbers and really having the access that they need. So I finally, um, after a little while, I just got, you know, got to the point where I really believed um, there was um, there was a niche there that could be 
could be uh, solved, or, you know, a problem that could be solved in a niche that could be had. And then I had to just kind of get the gumption up to step away from a, a, a job and a career I really liked to uh, to see if I could really, you know, make it work. So, so what are the parts of co-ownership of an aircraft that um, are not as great? Um, and and what are those parts um, that could be eliminated as as uh, being a member in um, or being part of the PIA um, program? Well, um, the questions that always come up when we're talking to somebody that the same concerns is how are we going to share this? How are we going to deal with when we want to use it and they want to use it? Um, how are we going to exit it? What happens if you know, that's always what happens if, what if my partner has a bad day financially or has a change and, and all of those. So there, there's, there's really four pieces to the puzzle that we changed uh, in terms of what a partnership is and what this program is. And by the way, this is not a partnership technically uh, or structurally. It's, it's a little different. It's a co-ownership. Um, and there are some very specific differences between those two things, important differences. So this is co-ownership. For all intents and purposes, it is a partnership, but, um, but, there, are, but there are some very specifics. And the four areas that we had to solve so that people could get comfortable because they were, they, everyone's attracted to the math, but afraid, you know, if the word partnership doesn't raise the hair on the back of your neck, you're not thinking straight. It should. Every There's just about everyone we do business with who's had a bad experience in some partnership along the way. And um, and so they come in with their defenses up, wanting to understand how this would work. And the four areas primarily that we had to solve were um, how you own it. And again, it's not a partnership, it's a co-ownership, and we can talk about those differences. How you share it, How are how is that going to work? And we, we've got that solved, um, how you exit it. Um, and we, we bring a little different um, philosophy than the old partnership model of when one of us wants to exit, we raise our hand and the other one has first right of refusal. That was kind of the old, you know, on the napkin partnership program. This is a little more structured. And then the last thing is how am I protected in this, you know, financially and from a liability standpoint. So those are the areas we really attacked, and we spent a couple of years solving those uh, before we brought this to the marketplace. When you when you work with Partners in Aviation now, what happens is um, you and usually your counsel will get on a call with our aviation tax consultant and our aviation legal team, and these are the best in the industry at those two things. And we go through that in some detail those those areas to the to the comfort level of our clients and their counsel. And most of our clients have very, very good legal counsel that ask the right question. So we have to get them through those four areas and how we've solved them. Once we get them past those concerns, which are universal to everyone we deal with, then it always seems to come back around to um, the value proposition. Then they can get more comfortable, again, talking about this, taking a you know, $4 million airplane and turning it into a $2 million airplane. Um, that's attractive. And taking whatever the fixed costs are of that airplane and dividing them in two, um, that all of a sudden the math comes back into focus after we can get through those four areas of concern. So how has your growth been? I mean, can you share any metrics with us? It's been good. Um, I think it's been good for everyone in our industry, honestly. Um, so we're we're the beneficiary of that, you know, rising tide, uh, raising all boats right now. So we're seeing it in the charter world. We're seeing it in the jet card world. Uh, we're seeing it in the membership programs. It, it, everybody is in our industry is saying the same thing. This is almost unprecedented times in terms of their activity level. So, um, uh, and I think we're we're benefiting from this this new um, uh, development, which is that more and more people are coming into our industry. Um, they're, they've just decided that this is the route for them. And so we're a little bit of a right place, right time model, I think, because a lot of those people, while they have the appetite for this, they don't have the need for the whole airplane. And, um, and that's, that's our niche is to find two, two operators that fly roughly a hundred hours a year um, 
and we were were match.com for for that that space in the industry so um, it's but it's been good um, from a metric standpoint um, the, the one that probably makes the most sense uh, for our clients is and the question is always how long will this take because this is our process is a bit of a journey it's not a plug and play you don't um, you don't. You just don't join the membership program on Friday and f- start flying on Monday. You're buying an airplane here, so there's a there's a there's a, a journey that goes through what has to happen to buy an airplane and do it correctly. Um, and that journey for us used to take in the early days when we started this six months to to find someone that right partner in their geography. Um, that six months. You know, as time went on and more and more came into the program, turned into four months. Um, that four months now is down to uh, 60 days and sometimes 30 days now because we have, when someone comes in, we've already got folks in their geography um, who've, who are kind of at the ready. Um, so, so the metric, I think really that's a value is, is what maybe would take us six months now can take us as little as 30 days in terms of the match. So how has the market fluctuated pre-COVID versus now? And how has PIA reflected that or maybe run counter to that? You know, actually, I think um, late 19, early 20, before COVID uh, became such an issue, we were we the industry were doing well and we're we're uh, ramping up and things were going reasonably well um the arrow was all was in the right direction for us and uh, um for much of the industry and uh and then covid just locked the brakes locked up and they locked up hard and I- immediately i can remember that thursday when all of the pro sports shut down and two deals we were in the middle of closing stopped mid closing literally um with money in escrow, we, you know, folks said, I, you know, I have to, I have to walk away. I have to stop. And that shut the industry down. Um, but really for about six months. And then um, uh, even though COVID was still um, a concern, we started getting back to business and people started deciding they were not going to stay hibernated any longer. They were going to go see their grandkids come hell or high water, they were going to do what they could do. And so about six months into it, I would say, you know, that fall of 20, we got back to it and it has just hasn't stopped um, in terms of the demand uh, in our industry. So um, honestly, I think that started, I think COVID was kind of a bump in the road for our industry that luckily didn't affect us like it sadly has affected a lot of other industries over that same course of time. We're, we're, we're one, some of the lucky ones. Um, there's been winners and losers in the COVID world. And I think the aviation industry is, is a winner because, um, because of what it allows people to do that they need, they need to get done now. And they're just not going to, they're not going to, um, the airlines are not the answer for them and staying home is not an option. Um, so, so the industry has has benefited from a, a little bit from what COVID has done, you know, to to a lot of other folks. Who is the typical partners in aviation customer? Could you give us sort of a thumbnail sketch? Yeah, I'll tell you who it's not. Um, it's not the corporate operator with the with a flight department. Where in many cases, I think the corporate operators. Um, are very often a, a customer of fractional programs as additional lift. Um, that's not who we're catering to. We're really catering to clientele that um, small business owners, private owners um, that in the past have owned an airplane by themselves, but struggled with that logic. If I'm using it about a hundred, maybe 150 hours a year, I've got my crew. I use it about 70% of the time for my business. I use it about 30% of the time for moving around uh, personally, you know, to in many cases, our clients have a second or third home. Um, um, so that's our client. It's the, it's the entrepreneur, it's the private business person. Um, it's often um, in our market, it's often the, um, the business owner that has now sold the business. And almost all of those folks 
still are in business one way or another. They're just doing something different. Um, it might be real estate, might be private equity. Um, and they have maybe even as much as a 50-50 business personal uh, use for an airplane. But all told, their total usage fits inside our box. And our box is 100 hours a year. That, that's who our client is. The low-end clients we serve are 50-hour-a-year clients. The high-end clients we serve are 150-hour-a-year clients. If they're flying less than 50 hours, they're probably not going to do what we do because, because there's capital invested here. This is ownership. And you have to get up to around that 50-hour mark before it's worth, uh, worthy of that, of that investment. Um, but once you hit 50 and certainly around 75, that's where our clients are. Um, if you get much north of 150 hours you're, and start pushing 200 hours a year, you're probably going to bend more towards uh, sole ownership, the way the math and access to your airplane is going to drive you. So our space in there, if you will, our, our kind of between the rails there is that's 75 to 125 hour a year user. That's 80 to 85% of our clients. And, and that client is using the airplane 75% of the time for business and 25, 30% of the time uh, personal use. Obviously, potential matches have to agree on a, a type of airplane. So if someone's flexible on the type of aircraft, how does that conversation work? Yeah, it's, it's a good question. It's a, a lot of what we discuss is models. Usually we start with models maybe they've been exposed to. Many of the clients are coming out of jet cards and charters. So they've been exposed to usually uh, a spectrum of airplanes. And what we try to do is we try to talk about the categories more so than the specific airplane. So um, if, if light jet is the, we, we try to, as we listen to their mission and, and their budgets and their comfort at operating costs, we, it drives us to, is this a light jet customer? Is this a mid jet, mid size customer, super mid customer? Those are, that's where we, uh, the space we live in for the most part we've done, we do some, we're doing a King Air B200 right now. And uh, we just finished a PC 12, but we don't do a lot of turboprop work. Um, and we don't do a lot of heavy jet work, although we're, uh, we are just finishing a G4 SP and a Falcon 900 LX. So we, we play a little bit in the spaces on those, on the two far ends, but, but the majority of ours is light, mid and super mids. That's, um, and so when a client comes and talks to us, we talk more about which category fits you. And this category, um, even though the manufacturers will all tell you theirs is the lowest cost airplane, the lowest DOCs, if they're a light jet, they're going to be all about the same uh, in terms of cost. We're paying the crew the same. We're, the hangar rent's going to be pretty much the same for the competitive airplanes. Um, and the FAA requires pretty much the same maintenance on all those airplanes, and many of them use the same engines. So, so we look at it and we say, okay, this is a light jet candidate based on what he's telling us, or a midsize, or a super midsize candidate. And that's um, and for us, we it selfishly we like it when they give us, um, you know, just more of a category as opposed to this is the specific airplane I'm looking for. If they have a very specific model that that's what they want. That's what we'll work towards for them. Um, but we're, we're all better served if they, if they can tell us what they like in order and give us a little bit bigger net to cast in terms of category. I'm running a little bit short on time, but I did want to ask you what's in the future for partners in aviation. What do you see ahead? What are your goals? Boy, um, more of the same, honestly. I mean, we're still a new company for all intents and purposes. Uh, although we, you know, we started in 2016 and we started putting, uh, we actually started advertising then in 2018. It took a couple of years to get there. Um, and then we started putting matches up in the sky in late 2018. Um, so we're, we're still a relatively new company, but now at this point, you know, we do have matches across the spectrum, um, of categories and we have them from coast to coast. Um, so we're, uh, we're still in, in, in that space where we just want to keep doing what we do. We, we want to, we want to be looked down as Colonel Sanders for, for just doing one thing and one thing, right. You know, and if we can do that 
and own this space of uh, two owners, one aircraft, and then a manager, um, that's what we want to continue doing and just see if we can continue to grow it. I love that, the Colonel Sanders, <laughs> the uh, the Kentucky Fried Chicken. And I've also heard comparisons made to Match.com and Just Lunch. You know, it's kind of a dating service for for people who want that partial ownership of an aircraft. It's been such a, a wonderful conversation, Mark. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Uh, Mark Malloy with Partners in Aviation. Where can we go to learn more? Um, tell us about um, where people can find you online. Uh, partnersinaviation.com. And on there, you'll get a, a, an overview of what we do. And then if you'd like to talk about it, the best thing is to schedule a consult and um, love to visit with you on it. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mark. I'm Tom Patterson for Flying Magazine. Thank you very much for watching.